Troubleshooting is a great way to learn electronics, a way to gain practical experience and a good complement to theoretical studies. This video will list 5 tips based on situations from previous videos that might be good to keep in mind when troubleshooting. Number 1. Gather information. Before you start the troubleshooting process you might want to consider any relevant information you have or see if you can find out more. This could be for example how old the unit is, if it's a very old unit you might have problems with dried out capacitors, has it been extensively used, if that is the case you might consider focusing on components that wear out, are there any known common issues with your model, and so on. In the case with the Carlsberg Cobra, it had been stored in a humid environment without temperature control for quite a long time. When considering that information, it doesn't seem very surprising that the problem turned out to be corrosion on a connector. I wouldn't call the troubleshooting a waste of time though. The operational amplifier that broke during testing in the same video was quite easy to fix as we had already gotten acquainted with the design. So if you want to take the opportunity to get acquainted with your equipment or just practice your troubleshooting skills, you might want to go right ahead with the troubleshooting. But if you just want to get it working as efficiently as possible, use the information you have and see if you can narrow it down even before getting your measurement equipment. Number 2. Have the complete unit at your disposal. Since you don't know what is wrong with the unit until you troubleshoot it, you should make sure to have the entire unit available. Even if this seems obvious to you if you're experienced in electronics, it will most likely not be obvious to someone you are helping out with a repair. Let's say they see an obviously burned component on a control board and assume that this is where the problem is and so they give you the control board to work on. Then you are faced with multiple questions that you will struggle to find the answer to. Was this the primary failure or was it a secondary failure caused by let's say a broken power supply? In which case the repaired control board would most likely just break again when you plug it back in. Did this failure cause any additional damage to the unit? How are you supposed to test the control board when you've replaced the broken components? In the example with the Hogstorm 26, which had excessive hum, the case was missing. And the copper tap indicate that the case was made out of a conductive material that was grounded by this tap, thereby acting as a shield for electric fields. The lack of this shield made it harder to tell if the hum was coming from surrounding electric fields or a failure in the circuit. Sometimes though you can't get the complete unit. For example, if you're repairing something from a fixed installation, like a heat pump, if you can't do the repair in place, you will have to make do with what you can get. The tip here would be to get the surrounding components documented as well as possible so that you can make reasonable assumptions during troubleshooting. Number 3. Don't stop at one component. When you have found a broken component, it might be quite tempting to turn it on right away after replacing it, but before doing that, it's a good idea to consider why the component failed. It could be caused by another failure somewhere else in the circuit, and until you find the primary failure, you might just keep breaking components. The broken transformer from the Tailwind MaxMig repair is a good example. Had the transformer failed due to a dead short on the output, replacing it would most likely just result in another broken transformer. In this case the transformer was the primary failure and probably broke due to mechanical shock. Number 4. Beware of tampering. It is not uncommon to see signs of old repairs when troubleshooting, especially in older units. If these are done properly, it's not to worry about. But something that can make troubleshooting a pain is when the unit has been worked on by someone without proper electronics knowledge. Signs of this could be for example wrong components or incorrect component values, out of place modifications, bad soldering and so on. If you do encounter this the troubleshooting might turn quite tedious as you cannot really trust any expected measurement values until you have sorted out what has been changed. But this is still valuable information as it is often a lot better than trying to find a failure in a circuit that was not operating as it should to begin with. In the example with the Luxman 5C50, the power was cut to an entire section of the unit. In this case it was quite obvious, but starting out with examining the two wires taped to the board proved to be a good place to start. Number 5. Look for known component issues. If you're stuck in a troubleshooting process, it might help to do some research on the components in the circuit. Some components are known to fail in a very non-intuitive way which can cause really peculiar behavior that is hard to troubleshoot. Being aware of these potentially odd component behaviors might make them easier to track down. 
In the first Luxman 5C50 repair video, the failure turned out to be a transistor in the power supply regulator that had a known flaw to turn noisy with age, which in this case caused the power supply to be unstable. That's it. The reference videos will be linked in the description. Goodbye.